This is a demo of instance recovery and instance auto restart in a rack cluster. So here in SQL developer I have two connections. The first connection is to node 1 with to rack 1 instance. Second connection is to node 2 rack 2 instance. Okay. So I'm going to just create some transactions here. Just gonna run this create statement and then insert some rows into it. So I've inserted 75,230 rows, but remember before the insert date it was actually at zero rows because I created with one is equal to two. So there is 75,000 rows, but not yet committed. Now what I'm going to do is on node two where this session is running. Okay, this is node two. I'm going to kill the instance, but not the node itself. Before I do that, let me look at the alert log. This is the alert log for instance 1 on node 1. Okay, I'll just show you the alert log. Okay, so this is rack 1 alert log for that is for node 1, instance 1. Now I kill the instance on node 2. So now it's going to detect that node 2 instances died okay so it's actually doing an instance recovery as well so you can see that here it's doing a reconfiguration currently there's only one instance active but if I want to scroll back through this uh, let me just stop this and then I scroll back through the alert log you can see from here it detected instance failure and then it began instance recovery, right? So it has done the instance recovery. That means the insert that I did at node 2 would have been rolled back. And like I showed in a previous uh, demonstration, instance recovery can actually span multiple online read logs. So thread 2 is for node 2, that is instance 2, and two read logs were recovered to execute the instance recovery. Okay. So here's this redo application message completed data picture of 12.3 megabytes and so many blocks read written and so on so instance recovery has been done it says okay I, I have only one instance that is instance one now let me go back to this server I am in the CRS trace directory so there's an alert file here as well So this is the uh, 2210. You can see here it has detected that DB rack, DB21 rack, the resource that is for the database instance on node 2 has failed. These are all the previous messages 2158 when the node had come up, and this is the message which says it detected that it has failed. So the cluster has detected that the resource that is the database instance has failed at 2210, which corresponds pro approximately to the same time that this one has also de detected instance failure from no node 1 and actually done a recovery also on node 1. So the recovery has been done but the instance has not been restarted. So if I were to try to run this query or uh, anything whether I try to do an insert or whether I try to ah, okay so it has now reconnected. How did it reconnect? What has happened is that it detected the cluster fail the no resource failure okay and then brought up the instance so if I were to do a let me see. 
Remember previously the S1 was 22.03 when the instance was first started and now it has restarted the instance at 22.10 actually. So if I were to go to this alert log again, you can see the messages again. Instance 2 got attached again. So the GRD was partially frozen because it's attaching instance 2 again to the cluster. Let me just scroll back a bit. So now here it says instance 2 has, has joined the cluster again. So there was instance recovery. Uh, let me just scroll back through this mess, through this log file. Initially, it found instance 2 had died, that is instance 2 died and I am only instance 1. It did re no re uh, re uh, instance recovery from the redo logs of thread 2, that is for instance 2. And then instance 2 rejoined the cluster. So instance 2 was automatically restarted by the cluster where on node 2 and that's what the message. So when node 2 detects, the cluster where detects that the instance has failed, it writes a message but it does not write a message about the restart okay any successful message of a failed resource is not being written just that it detect a failure but it did restart the instance you can see at 2210 immediately very quickly within a few seconds so I'll just go to the Oracle account okay let me look at the okay so before I go if I go there just remember the CRS trace file for the CRS on node 2, the CRS trace file that is the alert log captures this information. So this is where you can find that it had detected a, a resource failure. In this case the resource was the instance because this is the name of that resource or the database instance. So let me just go to the alert log for this node. So this is the database and this is the instance. and this is the alert log. So I'll just open the alert log. Okay, sorry, you just you can't see, you probably can't see the last line. I'll open this alert log. On opening the alert log, you might not see it on your screen, but you can see here that this is the alert log and if I scroll down, see it has restarted the instance at 2210. I'll just scroll up a bit. I'm just scrolling up a bit before twenty two ten. Keep scrolling back. This is the initial startup. You can see 2203. 1003 was when the instance was initially started up. Okay, so these are all the instance startup when it when it opened at 2203, and then it crashed at 2210. Okay, so this is an instance shutdown abort, basically because I killed the S1 process here. Background process is dead, so PMON terminated the rest of the instance. Okay, so that's what happened at 2210. So it did a system state dump, okay, got terminated, and that's when it went down, 2210. Then you can see it was going to restart. So these are the messages for it starting up again. But unlike a single instance database where it, when you instance uh, restart the instance, the instance has its own instance recovery. In this case, the recovery for instance 2 or node 2 was done by instance 1. So when a failed instance restarts in a rack, it does not have to do instance recovery at all. It will verify that it is co it's consistent and all that. So, so it will rejoin the global resource directory, it will rejoin the cluster, but it does not do, need to do instance recovery. So that is the advantage of rack. You, your, when you bring up your instance, maybe your node went down, maybe there's a hardware failure, whatever. When you bring up, you don't lose time in doing instance recovery because instance recovery has already been done by any of the surviving instances.
so the instance was brought up the PDB was also opened up <coughs> and because PDB even PDB was open initially it got opened also so that's how I was able to query but if I were to query now I will not see uh, 150,000 rows I only see 75,000 rows because the first 75,000 rows that were inserted initially were rolled back by this recovery. Only the second execution of the insert is now present and although I have not committed it, uh, it is not visible to any users. So if I were to commit it now at least I will be able to preserve that. Let me just for example if I to run this query from node 1. So what it's doing is it's finding that there are blocks in the uh, global bu buffer cache, right? So that's what rack is. It's, 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 it's like one global instance, one global memory. So it's finding the, it has gone through all the blocks, but it finds that none of the rows were committed. So this count start took a lot of time, but it found that nothing was committed. So it returns zero rows. So if I do a commit now. Remember I must do the commit from the same session which did the insert. I can't do a commit from another session. Then I can run this query again. <coughs> so it's again going to re read all the blocks because the blocks were all present in the instance 2 buffer cache and I'm running the query from instance 1 so it's, it's fetching all the blocks. Maybe one day we can look at how, what, what is the background operations and what are the weight statistics which tell you about this operation but here instance 1 is re reading all the blocks that were in instance 2 buffer cache and it found the rows but remember when I did this insert twice if you sc scroll back through the recording you see that I executed the insert twice but the first insert got ro rolled back because instance 1 did an instance recovery <coughs> and instance 2 got auto restarted okay so instance 2 got auto restarted because the cluster where detected it had gone down and restarted. The only thing you must remember is the cluster where log file, this is the location of the cluster, log, log, cluster where log file, this is the name of the log file, will not write a message about successful startup of a failed resource. In this case, the failed resource was the database instance. Failed <coughs> resource could have been a listener also. <coughs> Here, the failed resource is the database instance. So, there you have it. When an instance dies abnormally, instance recovery is done by any of the surviving instances <coughs> and the node where the instance died detected it has gone down and does a restart of that instance. So which you see in the alert log, I will just show you the alert log again. This open is after the automatic restart at 22.10 and the previous, uh, okay, it, it just does, it does it, uh, here twice and then the previous instance was at 22.03 when I initially started up the server. So there you have it, instance recovery is done by one instance but instance startup is done by the cluster where of, of the node where the failed instance was running. <coughs> 